Welcome to Upskilling for Tomorrow, a session hosted by AI Academy with speakers Aníbal Labarca and Aide Martínez. My name is Aníbal Labarca. I'm Chief Technology Officer here at Wiseline. As I share in the chat, I'm, I'm based in Montreal, uh, Canada. I moved with my family last year here. And, and my role at Wiseline, uh, my main focus is to work uh, with our customers and designing with our team and, and the technology leadership team at Wiseline. The, the direction that we're taking, how are we developing our offerings? How are we maturing capabilities and developing solutions to connect to market opportunities and, and partnering with companies like Google, Microsoft, and Amazon, among others, to 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 build the solutions and, and help our customers in their kind of transformation process. Of course, AI now is is the, the big topic. And, and we have been developing our AI native framework. And this is how companies adopt and embrace AI uh, across all of their processes and different roles in the organization. So this is a, a conversation that is, I'm very interested in, in sharing uh, what we are doing, how we are thinking about it, and, and also to listening to your questions and, and, and your feedback as a, as a, as a learning exercise and a collaborative exercise. So I'm looking forward for this conversation and thank you for, for joining. As Aníbal said, thank you all for joining and taking the time to learn a little bit about the AI skills that are shaping our future. Um, I always like to say that um, if you are here, if you're in this space and, and giving this time, um, then it means that you're already changing something, right? You're already achieving something. You're already part of something. So thank you for trusting us and thank you for taking the time, right? So I'm Aide Martinez. I'm head of AI and data here at Wiseline. I'm a computer systems engineer. I have a postgraduate in artificial intelligence and I'm finishing my master's in data science. Um, here at Wiseline, I am the leader of the data team, which consists of over 800 data engineers, data scientists, data analysts, and business analysts. And we also have our research and development team uh, focused on Gen AI. And as Aníbal was saying right now, the hype is AI. We've all heard everywhere. And um, if you're here, it's because you want to be part of it, or at least learn a little bit of how uh, we can be part of that world. But as I mentioned before, if you're in this webinar, you're already part of that world. So let's do it. So I'll begin with definitions. And AI, per definition, and a really short definition, is the attempt of a machine, a computer, a device, or a system to be as, as smart as a human. Keyword attempt, right? We attempt because we are we still don't even understand how um, like biological intelligence or our normal intelligence work or how our brains work. So it's the attempt to uh, make a computer or a system as smart as a human. AI is split into big areas, which is hardware and software. Hardware is robotics and software is machine learning. It's also split into big areas, which are, which are um, the academics and the industry, right? We do AI for the industry. We also, we have our research and development team, but we do it for the industry, right? Like every POC or every uh, research project that we work is same to end in production or end in the real world, right? So um, then machine learning is made through algorithms and algorithms are split in families. We have a family of algorithms called supervised learning, um, which, the, in this kind of algorithms, it learns through examples. We are guiding the algorithm to the right answer, like the same way as humans learn. You know, when we go to school and they're like two plus two is four. So they're giving us the right answer and that's how it's learning kind of this algorithm. And on supervised learning, it's more, and I know it sounds super sexy, but it's more about uh, categorizing data. It, the output of an unsupervised learning algorithm is a cluster or a group of data similar in between, or how I like to call it, packs of data, packs of similar data. And the output of a supervised learning algorithm, it's a prediction. Since it has like the correct answers, it's able to predict. 
So now, um, generative AI is a type of AI, and I have to do like a disclaimer here. We like to say that we say AI for investors and decision makers, but we do we say machine learning or data science for engineers and data scientists and machine learning engineers. So um, with that said, generative AI is a type of AI or a model or, or tools or models um, that are designed to create uh, content such as a human will create it, right? So the same way that we are able to write a letter or create images, um, generative AI models are trying to do the same, generate content such as a human would do. It's supervised learning because it was taught uh, by examples, uh, the correct answers and ways to reply and what is the right thing to, to say or, or what is this kind of style, if it's an image and things like that. That With that said, I'm gonna go into the timeline. AI was born around the 50s. Um, the father of AI, we call it that way, is Alan Turing. And in the beginning, in the 50s, he was writing a thesis in where he was, where the um, a statement he was trying to prove or his hypothesis was if computers could have, could think. Then he realized that this uh, statement had a big um, ethic, um, load, so he decided to change it to if computers can imitate humans. It was much complicated than that, but basically it was if computers could imitate humans. Then it become, he created the Turing test where there was a test for computers and systems, and as a human will decide if that system or computer um, was indeed a human or a computer, and if you as a human or the subject of test decided that that system was a human, that system was considered artificial intelligence. And then that's where the term was coined. But in the 1950s was the, the first algorithm was born, which was the perceptron. Then uh, on the 60s, there was an improvement for the perceptron, which was the uh, back propagation. Then it came the winter of AI because of computational power. Everything like slowed down the academics or the academia remained researching a little bit, but uh, in the industry, it was like taken out because, you know, the industry looks for profit immediately, right? So then on 1998, the GPU was invented by uh, NVIDIA. And um, after that, uh, someone, one day, it was around 2003 or six, someone said, let me train this neural network in this GPU. And since GPUs are graphical processor units and work for pixels, um, they realized it was faster to train a neural network using the GPUs. So the boom uh, went back. And then there were a lot of improvements on algorithms. We had reinforcement learning, transformers. Transformers are the algorithms that are used behind uh, large language models. And this works, the, this algorithm was born in a paper that uh, was born in 2017. Um, all you got is attention, and it gives certain weights to different kind of words or or phrases, and that's how transformer works, and that's how we're able to prompt or ask for something when we use generative AI. But we are interested in this. In, in this conversation, I and, and I will explain this in, in two in, in two main dimensions, right? That one of the, one of the best or most important dimensions of this is generative AI is going to help us be more productive. And we're going to talk about how is that happening and, and in which roles on, on how many roles are going to change and what are the skills that we need to develop or what are the skills that are changing. But something that 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 is very important, and 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 I will talk more about this when we discuss on the soft the skills and the the different uh, areas that we should be developing, is the idea of it's not only going to make us more productive because we're going to do more of what we are currently doing. What I like to think about this is that it's going to help us do more, and and do more of what we are really good at. As, as humans, as, as an individual, right? So it's going to release time and it's going to release headspace of things that are not necessarily added value. So that's where the productivity comes from. It's not only about automation of repetitive tasks, 
is releasing that headspace and allowing us to do more, which is very interesting, right? So the, the potential on increasing productivity is something that is super, super important. The, the other part of why we are interested on, on this is, this is going to be a huge market. So we can think about this as, um, as, as entrepreneurs as well, um, or we are finding ways for our companies to grow and to have an, uh, a presence in this market either because we are creating tools, because we are offering services connected to AI, or, or because we are launching a new company. This is super important. The, the market opportunity, according to most of the, the different market research companies, this is going to grow over 35% year over year during the next decade. Uh, so it's uh, it's uh, it's growing faster than any software category is growing faster than any even like cloud or any other technology category. AI and generative AI in particular is growing faster than than anything else and probably twice as as fast as as anything else, right? So this is a huge opportunity, and and it's disrupting almost every role. Um, we're going to talk about uh, about thirty five percent, thirty seven percent of all jobs are going to be disrupted at different levels or at different stations, but basically everyone is going to be impacted by this. So this is why we believe it's so important to start talking about this right now and to start actually acting on this, right? To, to leverage the benefits of generative AI, like with GitHub Copilot, start getting up, up to 5%, 55% of productivity. But that's just, that, that is just the beginning, right? What we want to discuss is, okay, that is perfect. I, I'm 55% more productive, but the reality is that I believe that we can produce even 10 times more than what we're currently producing. And, and I can give some examples on how am I using it in, in, in my day to day. But this is why I'm very excited both on the productivity impacts or how it's impacting our jobs, but also on, on the market opportunity that we that we can find to create new companies or to launch new services. So everyone, we can use generative AI, we can use the tools. The other day, someone was asking me, why uh, is Gen AI like being a priority for all the industries? And it's and I think that it's because it's relatable and we can understand it, right? Uh, there are the things that we cannot relate or we cannot understand are hard to imagine use cases. And generative AI is simple to use and we can interact with it in, in a human-like basis. But in skills hands, it becomes the beginning and it can be, and we can explode the potential if we are those skill hands, right? So what comes is, what you're all here for. What are those skills that can make us those skill hands that can give us a differentiate, differentiator uh, among all the people that we can use or explode generative AI models or tools for our own value and the value of the industries or the places or the projects that we work at? And, and there have been a, a couple of recent reports, one also from IBM and, and the other one from LinkedIn, uh, about the, the percentage of jobs that will have to be reskilled or jobs and roles, right? Like something that is very important in the LinkedIn report says that the number of new skills or the AI related skills and the behavior of different profiles or lots of profiles on LinkedIn that now are calling out the specific AI related skills and the number of AI related skills that have been created or uh, are, are growing in the listed in those profiles, right? And, and this, is, this is super important and this has grown a lot in the last 12 months, right? Um, I think in, in this case is, it, it's in, it comes in two, in two flavors. One is, how are we leveraging new AI technologies, generative AI technologies? And, and that could be like, is there going to be an opportunity to be a prompt engineer? And like that could be a job that is impacting or something that is changing. But at the same time, there are so many new tools like a few weeks ago, uh, AI Academy launched uh, a sprint focus on LangChain. Right? Like probably LangChain six months ago, 
was not a skill that you would think about and and that you needed, right? Something kind of probably didn't exist or a few a few months back, definitely a year, not necessarily, right? But those skills are now much more relevant because you can leverage those skills to actually build an interconnect different model. So when we look at the technical roles, how are those roles going to how are going to evolve and all of those that you will need to keep up with the with all of the technology that is that is coming out. And it's basically every day we see new papers and we need we see new services. So it's definitely it's definitely important to to reskill. I feel like the, in this report from from McKinsey in particular, it feels like it's very conservative, right? Like twenty five percent or up to sixty five percent. It feels like very conservative. It's from the sense that most roles are are actually going to be changing. Right? Like if you are in an office, if you work with software, if you work with knowledge in any in any knowledge related role, I feel like we all need to 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 learn how to use several of these technologies. Like I, I'm looking at some of the comments on the on the chat. Like I, I really like like I use the lead to restore my old family pic, right? Like that's amazing. I can't imagine like all of those, like those type of examples are going to be arising everywhere. Like I do it to create, uh, to to um, input all of the reports, all, all of the documents into my system, or I create it to create new copy for my products or for my social media, or I do it for edit new content on uh, creating short videos on TikTok, right? Like everyone is going to be using this and everyone should learn how to use these technologies. That's from the pure generative AI consumer focus. That, so that's one, one, one trend that I think is super important. And then the other one is, of course, for everyone that is working on the technology side, building technology with AI. I, we have seen so many new tools coming in every day, every week. Um, I believe there are more than ever, like 100% of um the the software engineering community i believe that we should be thinking about how to reskill and how to focus on learning how to adapt either tools that are going to help us become more productive or the new technologies that are going to be part of the tech stack to build this these type of solutions i i think is is something that that we should all be thinking about and what i like about this is that it's not something that is only available for a few, for for a very selected, very um, um, kind of super specialized group, because for the use of generative AI and most of these tools, it's actually software engineering, right? It's, it's connecting, it's building pipelines, it's building automation, it's connecting to APIs, and it's not necessarily data science or 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 something very very complex. So this is becoming much more available for everyone. This first quote that says that 1.5 billion workers will have to reskill for AI in the next three years, but also the second quote that is super, super, something that we've heard a lot, right? Uh, that we've heard that AI will replace workers and then no workers will be longer needed. Well, um, when the calculator was uh, built, um, a lot of people were scared because uh, no, there was something that could add, subtract, multiply, divide, I don't know, square root or do math operations, right? So people were worried like, oh no, they're gonna replace us. But instead of that, we just turned into more complicated stuff, right? We became, we begin using the calculator as a tool that could increase our uh, knowledge and could help us be faster in other research. So it's the same with Gen AI. Um, there's a lot of things like, how can you know if someone do their homework with ChatGPT or things like that? Well, you should assume they will do it, right? It was the same with Wikipedia at the beginning, right? Teachers were like, you should not use Wikipedia because the information is not correct. And it's really simple. Please research in a book. Ah, we should assume that people are using ChatGPT. And that means that we can use our time to do more complicated stuff and that we can use AI in, in doing other things, right? We can use AI to help us do other things or more complicated things or add or, um, 
or input to the new step of evolution or discover the cure to cancer or things like that. Let's use AI as a tool. And yes, I I was I have said this before, right? Uh, when the industrial revolution, the same as the calculator, people were worried about uh, losing their jobs. And I like to use this phrase, um, when Charles Darwin, we all heard that Charles Darwin said this phrase that says, the survival of the strongest, but that's not true. The reality is that he said, the survival of the most adaptable, and it got lost in, trans in translation, sorry. So that's the key. For me, that's the key. The fact that you're here listening to this webinar is because you're interested in reskilling, right? And because you are adapting to the new technologies that are arriving. So that's it. We just need to reskill, we just need to adapt in order to be part of this. And um, a lot of things will change. Um, as Anibal said, we have a new need, which is prompting. And we just realized that we're not even good communicating between humans. So it's harder to communicate with computers because the, the quality of the output, it's strongly tied to the quality of the prompt. So we need to be really like straightforward in what we're asking. And even though, it just is re it just requires coding to call an API and and integrate um, Gen AI into like your solution or platforms. Um, you still need some things that could help or like you know layers of code that will adjust to your prompting because sometimes you will you would want creativity or would you would want a different tone in messages or you would want a different kind of images so there's a lot of areas that are gonna begin rising or roles that are gonna begin uh being created right so it's a matter of being adapt or being able to adapt and also to use these as tools And what I like about this report from Microsoft is that the actual AI, like the, the actual skills that they are proposing that are going to be the, the key differentiators, if you look at these, those are not necessarily technical skills. Like, or I, actually those are not technical skills. Those are human skills. Those are soft skills. Those are, or we can call it power skills. But those are things that are only things that humans can do. Like we have to, we have to develop a better analytical judgment, creative uh, evaluation, critical thinking, interpersonal relationships, and better communication, emotional intelligence, right? Flexibility, as as I was saying on 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 that adaptability, and bias detection. Like that is super important. Like we cannot think, we cannot think that AI has the whole truth. You, we have to judge that. We have to ask uh, it, whether or not it, is this real, is this right? Because whether if, because if we believe everything that we are going to get from this, we are we are going to become just a product of what the AI is creating, right? And what the AI is creating is only is only what already has been created. So we have to ask the right questions we have to think differently we have to understand how to connect the different dots so what i believe like what is seen for us as 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 let's call it, humans in this in in this uh in in general for everyone if we consider that ai is going to be everywhere and 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 the way i look at this and the, the way uh we have been thinking about this is knowledge as as the concept of we have a specific context. We have knowledge about the problems we are solving. We have knowledge about the people we are serving. We have knowledge about our community, our culture. Like that context is something that we can only understand as humans. Right? Like that is not something that the, the models um, and the artificial intelligence is able to understand. So that knowledge is something that we have to contribute. And and those you can see a lot of those uh, skills. How can those relate to knowledge? The second part is with that knowledge, with that context, you have to bring creativity. You have to understand 
and design and define what is the problem that you want to solve. And you have to ask the right questions, right? Because that is something that the AI is not going to provide to you. And probably both, a, a lot of people can think, can have access to the same technology because this is what's happening with the adoption of, of all of every technology revolution is bringing that technology to more people faster, right? So assuming that everyone's going to have access to the same technologies at a fairly accessible, almost free price, knowledge, critical thinking, understanding, curiosity, super important, emotional intelligence, super important. Uh, so we can be empathetic, so we can understand the, the, the nuances of bias and the nuances of the problems that we're trying to solve. And then creativity, right? like curiosity, creativity, asking the right questions because you can have the same access to the technology and you are probably, you are not going to be able to create anything new, right? Because you don't know what to ask because you don't have the, 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 the opportunity to connect. And, and then the, the third component on that cycle is you are going to have to create the data. And, and, and reinforce this cycle, right? With more data and that data can come from the models, that data can come from the experiences, from the iterations of the products that you are creating to build up on the knowledge you have. And, and as you connect that knowledge, you build up to create more, to have more creativity, to be, to be more curious, to connect better with the different, with the, with the, with your customers, with your community. So, and, um, that's that's I believe what is what is the most important. I I I in 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 one of the articles that I've been like kind of writing and 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 having reflections every week. Um, I was thinking on what what happens when all knowledge becomes a commodity, a commodity, right? And 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 that might be right. Like, do I know? Do I need to know how to write Python? Probably not, right? But that co what comes after that? Right? Like, and if knowledge is commoditized, what comes after that? Um, after those technical skills are basically available, right? Um, and and I believe that that is is like what we are seeing in this slide is is super important, and and it should be what we are thinking about, what we should be thinking about, and what we should be kind of investing time on on developing these skills, which are more interpersonal. But also at the same time is, I, I do believe that we need to think on how can we create value? Because I don't believe that this kind of this revolution in terms of artificial intelligence, which is creative computing, is about re just automating repetitive stuff. If we look at that, it's just like reducing cost and, and, and doing more with less without having the opportunity to create more. I think we're going to end losing, right? Like we're going to be ending a lot of jobs. We're going to be ending a lot of identity and and, and, and we're going to, to to make a lot of harm. I, I, but I don't think that should be the approach. We should be thinking about how to create value and how to, how to kind of augment um, human intelligence and human capabilities. So there are different approaches to be in the AI world. Either you want to be a data scientist or you want to be a prompt engineer or you want to use Gen AI or whatever. There are tons of ways of doing. If you want to go into AI itself and write an algorithm or do data science, then it's math, uh, algebra, uh, probability and statistics, and programming, right? Uh, I think it's easier for uh, mathematicians to move to AI because they just have to learn to code uh, than for programmers to move to AI because you need to learn a lot of math. But as everything, we can learn it. We can learn it. I mean, every, everything we learn, everything new, every new thing we learn takes a, a curve and some effort, just like this. But maybe you just want to use Gen AI so, and you don't know how to code, maybe you just have to learn to code. And AI can be, it's an interdisciplinary field. So that means that you don't have to be an expert in AI, you can be an expert in your subject, right? And then just uh, be a companion through AI, 
right? Use AI to boost uh, your uh, research or your work or your project. You don't necessarily need to be an expert on AI to adjust or to upskill in this new job. Just you have to know a little bit of, about, of AI so you are able to do a companionship to any industry or area you're working at. And that, let me tell you, if that's true, if someone comfortable with AI might replace you, then you can become that person. Just learn a little bit about AI and also be able to raise your hand and to give your ideas and to innovate. As this slide shows, there are several areas, data science and analytics, machine learning and AI algorithms, natural language processing, uh, software development and AI embedding, ethics and bias mitigation, and cybersecurity and privacy. Right now, we have the internet, we have YouTube, we have a free college or university out there. We have information. This is the era of information. If we're not learning, it's because we're not searching. But we have all the information out there. Plus, we have the amazing sprints of AI Academy that we're going to talk about in a few. But it's just a matter of where should I begin? Oh, you can use Gen AI tools also to ask that. Hey, Chai GPT, I'm trying to begin learning AI for, I don't know, ethics and bias. I want to be an ethics and bias master for AI. Okay, where should I begin? It can give you tips. You can ignore those tips or you can build your own path. We all build our own paths, but be action oriented, right? Set up goals and set up triggers. Um, and that can help you. I mean, once again, you are free to ignore my advice. I don't have the source of truth, but that have worked for me. Uh, set up your goals and your metrics and just dedicate at least one hour per day to what you're aiming to do. Either read articles or books or exercises or workshops. And that can lead little by little, like 1%, as they said in like Japanese manufacturing, 1% per day, 1% per day can make the difference. Sooner than later, you'll be understanding everything. And uh, there's no binary way to say if you belong to the AI world. It's not like you either belong or you don't. And there's not like a certification or a person that tells you, do you belong to the AI world? We all belong here. We all belong here. And AI is in the world more than we in the world of AI. And I'm gonna be like motivational here. We all can learn whatever that we want, right? And this is a story that I love that uh, when Albert Einstein died, he asked for um, his body to be uh, incinerated immediately. But the person that did the autopsy stole his brain, right? Because he wanted to see if there was something biologically that makes the difference uh, for him to be a genius, right? So there were a lot of studies and there was no data out of the normal values, right? Everything looked normal. Some spikes and stuff, but nothing out of normal. So I like to give this example to tell you that uh, learning, being a genius is not something that we born into because I've heard people say that like, I was not born into for doing math or for doing coding. We are born to learn at least five sports, five languages. Um, we, our brain doesn't have limits uh, on learning. And if it had those limits were would be dynamic. That means it could be expanded. So we have tons and millions of neurons and it's been proved that the neuroplasticity that we create uh, more neurons each time. And some a, a characteristic that the Gen AI models have is that since they've been training so many, many, many data, they learn to learn. So there we are able to ask in our prompts simple questions or, or give simple examples. And these models can uh, follow our instructions because they they learn to learn. Us, as humans, we also learn to learn. Every time we learn something, every time we read, we read an article, we practice something new, we learn to learn. So above AI and above everything, we need to, it's also an attitude uh, matter for me. Um, we can learn anything we want. We are able to do it. We should not compare to other learning processes. That's what changes the time. If I compare to another person, I will learn in a different speed, but that doesn't mean I can't learn. 
I could be slower or I could be faster. That's the difference. But I could always learn. So believe in yourself and get into it. And if you don't do something, if you don't do an action that takes you toward what you're trying to do, then never, nothing will happen. So just take the first action. It might sound very like over simplistic on, on the focus on all of those uh, individual more soft skills that we have been talking about, right? Like that, I believe that is true. But also, and, and considering we are software engineers, right? And, and and the reality is that what we are discussing is like we are we have only seen a, a little bit the tip of the iceberg iceberg for the for the real innovation that could happen. And and that comes in in, in one single application or mainly one application that probably is a, it's kind of taking over our imagination, which is ChatGPT. But if that's only one single application that is available in a via, via chat and via an API. But the reality is that if you want to take that to, to the real enterprise scenarios, to the very complex scenarios, when you have to take into consideration data privacy, security, scalability, right? like all sorts of things like concurrency of millions of or thousands of people at the same time, right? Like, and, and when you consider like, like very hard scenarios or tough scenarios in terms of latency, in terms of time to response, in terms of edge computing, like the reality is that those technologies are not ready, right? Like those technologies don't even, don't even exist. <laughs> so it might sound like an oversimplification when I was saying like, Okay, I'm not saying that you shouldn't learn Python because most likely those applications are going to need Python in order to get to the next level that we are discussing of the to actually take advantage of these models, right? Like, and these models are going to continue the, evolving and improving. So we should be investing in improving those models and to figure out how are these going to how are these models going to be integrated into the complex scenarios. Um, so where to start, I think like you can come to AI Academy where right. we are offering like land chain courses and, and, and of course, many other tools that we're going to bring like with uh, using all of the AWS suite on Bedrock and, and other models. We are going to create one specific on, on GCP. Uh, we just finished the land chain um, conversation, we're going to talk about the specific architectures, but those are just examples, right? Like when we think about, okay, how are we going to solve for these big problems? The every day there are new solutions, every day there are new services available. And, and as you start creating actual products that are being used by, by customers, we are finding like, oh, this sound nice at the beginning, but now actually like, how do we manage like 30 different customers at the same time if the memory and like the the, the context memory of chat GPT won't allow you to have more information? How are you going to solve for that problem? Like that 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 technology is not there yet. Um so I I think it's my recommendation would be to start building, right? Because I, I, it's it's the best time to 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 be learning new new skills around this because Everything is in the is in the oven. Everything is in the process of 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 actually being created. So as as we build, uh, not in a passive way, but in a very proactive way, I think um, we're going to find out what what do we have to learn. And that's I I believe that's the most exciting thing because what we are talking about in a very kind of aspirational, directional way. The reality is that in order for that to happen has to be built and 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 I will start by building. And and by building you are going to figure out what what are the skills that you need to 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 to, to get and to to find. And and because we are building, we will try to make sure that those skills that we find the most important in the building blocks are going to be available in, in AI Academy. Thanks for learning with us. We're thrilled to have you as part of our Wiseline Academy community.